Welcome, collectors and model railroad enthusiasts, to episode 11 already of the HO Files. Thank you very much to all of you guys that have stuck it out and have seen the previous 10 episodes. In today's episode 11, we're going to be reviewing my police station that is on my layout. Specifically, the building kit is the Walther's Cornerstone Modern Police Station, a fairly new release within the past year. Uh, I just purchased this kit last week and was able to finish it a few days ago. Have to say, a very easy build, very easy to assemble. Should only take you a couple hours, and uh, overall I'm very happy with how well it came together. Um, only a couple of slight issues with... One of these tiny little lights kind of separating and, and breaking, but I was able to make a somewhat satisfactory repair, so really you can hardly tell unless you go looking for it, or unless I mention it, of course. Uh, but otherwise, the fit and finish of, of the other pieces, for the most part, was, uh, was pretty good. So, that's the kit. We'll take a closer look at it when we actually look at the building. But first, as we always do, again, you know this if you've seen any of the other videos, let's look at the vehicles that are in front and on the side of the building that accompany it and bring the actual structure to life and give it some detail. So, starting on the left, we have a Rico, or Rico, pick your poison, on the correct pronunciation of that. A Chrysler 300C, a very highly detailed vehicle. Love these Rico. Uh, models. They're always very well done. The detail, the interior detail of these is always good as well. Even the underside is good. So there is the Chrysler 300C. Again, all of these Ryko vehicles are offered in a handful of different colors as well. So say you don't like that color, you can get it in uh, the popular gray, for example, or silver. This, I believe you have seen before, the Porsche Cayenne Turbo, right? Porsche Cayenne Turbo? Yeah. I always get this. I always get this in the Panamera confused. Um, very high-powered SUV. So if you have to go pick up the kids and set a land speed record at the same time, this is the vehicle for you. Next, we have a Viking Volkswagen New Beetle in green. Not a bad-looking car, if I do say so myself. In terms of the modeling detail, obviously, I would. Me personally, I would never buy one of these and drive one, but they are very popular. Even today. Next we have a, another Ryko. This is a Dodge Caliber. Kind of a crossover car. Four-door crossover car. They're, despite being almost 15 years old now. Uh, still are very popular on today's roads here in America. Alright. And last but certainly not least for our civilian or customer vehicles and worker vehicles. We have one of my favorites. This is, again is a Ryko 2005 uh, Ford Mustang GT, silver with a red interior. Uh, one of the newest additions that I was able to pick up. Again, very, very highly detailed car. Very nice model. All right, let's start again over here on the left-hand side with the police vehicles. So I have a fleet of five of these, um, essentially the exact same model. Now this is the Model Power 2005 Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. Uh, in NYPD livery. So my layout is not based in New York City. Uh, however, I chose the NYPD for my police department theme for my, my car fleet basically because there is so much in terms of NYPD vehicles available in HO scale. So if you were going to build an impressive layout, uh, why not go with something that there is an abundance of products available for? At least that was my thought process. So, And also me being from the state of New York, where I spent, you know, my, my years growing up in, um, it was a, it was a natural fit. So long story short, that's why I went with New York city, um, for the, for the police cars. But again, my layout is not really intended to be based on a specific city or state. Cause I have gotten that question a few times on this channel. Um, but there you have it. Also another model power vehicle. This is an NYPD Mercedes sprinter van. This is the command center van. Um, also very nicely detailed. By the way, if you ever wonder what the CPR on the side of these NYPD vehicles stands for, it stands for uh, courtesy, respect, or courtesy, professionalism, and respect. All you got to do is read the vehicle, Tom. Jeez. Um, that's been their slogan for quite a long time. So nice little van there. Could be great if you're, you know, needing to get a tactical team on site quickly too. Load them in the back of this and you're good to go. This is a River Point Station F-350, I believe. This is a crime scene unit. Um, not Obviously not in the same 
white and blue livery, but what are you going to do? Maybe they picked this up at auction or something. So back in the day, like talking the 70s to the early 90s, the NYPD actually had this paint scheme. So now it's white with blue stripes. Before it was blue with white stripes. This is a Bush Chevy Caprice. So why not have you know some older vehicles in the fleet? So this is one of them. This is, again, another model power 2005 Ford Crown Victoria, but this is a um, New York State Trooper. So that's the livery for the New York State Trooper. I would like to get one of the... Jeez, um, I forget who makes it. There's a Dodge Charger cop car that's in NYPD livery. I don't own one of those yet. It is on my to-get list. And last but certainly not least, the most unrealistic vehicle um this matchbox real working rigs swat truck now i say it's unrealistic because it's unrealistic however it's not out of the realm of possibility that a police department especially a large police department wouldn't order a vehicle that looks a whole lot like this i've actually seen some in my experience in life that look very similar to this uh, this has a battering ram on the front for breaching barricaded homes to get to barricaded suspects. You also have the front guard on the front that folds out like this. Again, based on real-world applications and stuff that's on real SWAT vehicles. As is this device. This isn't a gun. This is a water cannon for crowd dispersion, uh, for riots and other violent activities where large mass gatherings of crowds have have appeared. And then this last thing is a large uh, tow winch where you can pull down some of those uh, doors and fences that have the, the cages around them, again, that have been barricaded because suspects don't want people getting in. So again, not particularly a licensed casting, but very much a vehicle based on a conglomerate of real-world SWAT and tactical vehicles used by many police stations at the state, uh, lo at the state local, and federal level especially. So why not have one of these with the police station until anyway, until someone makes a, you know, a bear cat, for example, um, or even a buffalo. Some of the buffaloes from the military are now being handed down and used by some larger police agencies, as we see uh, several police agencies becoming more military uh, oriented. But that's, that's a whole nother story. All right, so those are the vehicles. Let's take a look at the building. Uh, this is one piece that I did paint. I said I didn't paint anything. I painted this and the gas and the electrical meter on the back of the building. That's all I did. Uh, as I said, the building was a Walther's Cornerstone Modern Police Station kit. Retails for about uh, about $40, give or take a few dollars either direction. Uh, a must-buy. I gotta say, kit went together great. I think it looks wonderful. And it's it's very easy to put together. There's the, the two meters. And I, and I gotta say, I love these. These are new on the newest of the Walther's Cornerstone building kits. Uh, they do add a level of realism and newness to all the buildings, and they actually offer these separately. So you can buy a bunch of these and put them on your buildings. That is a kit that I intend to get very soon so that I can modernize uh, some of my older buildings so that they are up to code. So as for the decals, these decals, as you may expect, do not come with the kit. They are custom made by me. Um, and for those of you who may be curious and wondering, um, obviously this is the NYPD New York City Police Department logo that many of you are familiar with, but why did I go with 5-5 Precinct? So here's the story behind that. 5-5 Precinct is actually not a real precinct in New York City. It's a made-up precinct. doesn't exist. Uh, but in the late 90s, early 2000s, there was a show on NBC called Third Watch, and it, basically it was about the third shift of the New York City Fire Department, New York City Police Department, and the EMS service. And it was a phenomenally well-done show. It was a little, it, honestly, it was a little cheesy, but at that time, you know, I was 8, 9, 10 years old, so it was, all, it was fascinating to me. And it really showcased the heroes of the our first responders at that time. And, and besides emergency in the, in the 70s, it was really the first show of its time in the modern era. And... Uh, especially after when September 11th hit, the show was still running. It was still going, and they actually incorporated that into part of their storyline. Uh, but anyway, that's beside the point. 
the 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 precinct that they all worked in was the fictional five five precinct and i believe it was based on the corner of macarthur and camelot or something like that um so they the precinct in there was was the five five precinct so paying homage to that show which was my my childhood show it was the only night of the week i could stay up past 9 30 because i got to watch that show um that's why I went with the 5-5 Precinct. So for any of you guys that watched this from the very beginning, that saw that decal and knew that that was paying homage to the old Third Watch show on NBC, you have scored full points with me. And make sure to leave a comment down below saying that you knew exactly what that was uh, and let me know. So as always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you guys so much for watching Part 11. And be sure to stay tuned. we got a lot of great stuff coming up in the coming days and the weeks. So take care. Be safe. I'll see you in the next review.